What is up guys, my name is Sticks, and if you don't already, follow me over on Twitter at ByteSticks to stay updated with the latest MMO related news. Dauntless is a co-op action RPG modeled very closely after the Monster Hunter franchise. Like all video game companies in this day and age, the team behind Dauntless saw a very underrepresented genre in the market, a niche that had yet to really be tapped into. So they went ahead and did what Monster Hunter never could. Port the game to PC. Jokes aside, I am a huge fan of the Monster Hunter games. I've been playing them for what seems like forever and I'm glad to see another company take on a market that Capcom has monopolized all these years. Similarly to how Rune Factory games were made to emulate the success of Harvest Moon. Man, I loved Harvest Moon. Oh, oh right, uh, yeah, Dauntless. The game takes place on the Shattered Isles, a collective of large broken shards of land scattered across the skies. The remnants of humanity that managed to escape the upheaval, the event that shattered the world, have since taken on the role of adventurers, explorers, artisans, merchants, and slayers in an attempt to both adapt and survive their harsh new reality. Plaguing the Shattered Isles are giant hulking behemoths, monsters of incomparable size and power. And that is where we come in. QR entry. We are, well, we're definitely dead after that fall. <clears throat> we are slayers. Our primary goal in life is, well, to slay behemoths. Okay, okay, look, guys, this seemed a lot cooler in my head, and the whole scene with me falling out of an airship thing, that ruined the momentum, all right? So anyway, I'd first like to talk about the character creator. You're given the ability to choose an ancestral tree that affects the base of your slayer. I chose to go with Willa, the badass looking babe on the left, and Merrily, because she looks like she'd make a cute waifu for Willa. Oh, I totally shipped them. I'm gonna call their ship name, uh, Willy. Okay, wait, no. That, that sounds very suggestive. Okay, uh, Marilla. Yeah, let's go with that. So you're given a fair amount of hairstyles to choose from, which honestly surprised me. Basic skin tone selection, eye colors, eye customization, nose shape, mouth size, head size, ear size, jaw size, you know, the huge. Also, for those of you that are interested in looking fabulous, there's that option as well. Like the Monster Hunter games, you're instantly taken into a mini tutorial encounter that has you engage a behemoth in combat as it tells you how to fight. Left click to attack, right click to attack with slightly more force, you know, things anyone that plays an action game on a PC should know. Afterwards, you're taken to the main quest hub of the game, Ramsgate. Ramsgate is where you meet other players, enhance and craft new gear, select missions, and uh... Yeah, it's a hub. It's where you do everything. It's a beautiful hub, granted, and it's refreshing seeing new players roam around every time you come back, but I would love to see more done with it. The hub system itself, I mean. As in feature a few different hubs that you can transition between. I always found it awfully limiting to have one single town where all humanity congregates. Like, what if a behemoth, or worse yet, a group of behemoths rush Ramsgate? We're all fucked! After taking the time to explore Ramsgate, my wife Adrian and I finally got to embark on our first real adventure. We got to go out adventuring with a friendly Spanish man, where we learned how to pick daisies, attack the wildlife, and fly around on weird little... guys or... Thanks. I, I don't know, guys. I didn't ask any questions, okay? There is no class system in Dauntless, merely weapon types. Your selection of attacks and combos are predefined by what weapon you have equipped. From what I could tell, each weapon offered the same attack power, yet did vastly different amounts of damage when hitting the behemoths overall. My greatsword would hit an average of 300 damage, whereas my hammer would hit upwards of 400. I didn't get to try out the other weapon types, as honestly, I didn't want to keep fighting the same behemoths to get the crafting materials, so I can't speculate on whether they do more or less. Combat was a little slow and a tad bit clunky, but then that could be because I've gotten spoiled with how fast combat is in action games these days. However, combos, dodging, and maintaining aggro was a lot of fun. I quickly learned that there is a tremendous disparity, however, between how hard behemoths hit and the amount of armor your gear gives. 
This leaves less wiggle room for error, which was proven by multiple deaths throughout our adventures, once by me, once by Adrian, and multiple times by other players. This was actually quite an invigorating experience, having the encounters require some form of skill to overcome. Upon successful completion of your objective, players are rewarded badges in lieu of their accomplishments, such as Slayer, Steadfast, Breaker, Evasive, and more, to give you an estimate of overall player contribution. That is definitely one way of proving whose dick is longest. I also learned firsthand that unfortunately, the areas were suicide proof. <laughs> Just like in Zelda. Which, admittedly, was a good idea. For that guy, anyway. Now, after a certain point in each encounter, behemoths begin enraging. Like, oh my god, what the, the. What what just happened? Did we just cut his tail off? Yep, so apparently you can also dismember behemoths. That is handy. Moving on, behemoths are capable of enraging. They enter a heightened state, they hit harder, they move faster, and have access to enhanced attacks. This can make them significantly more difficult to deal with, as from what I've been able to tell thus far, they become immune to staggering as well. Bosses also drop unique crafting materials that can be used to craft weapons and armor in their unique style. For example, after killing Nasher and obtaining Nasher Hide, I went on to craft a Nasher weapon and Nasher armor, prepping me for the winter that was yet to come. All in all, I believe we went up against around 8, maybe 9 different behemoths. Most of them shared models with one another, but they got progressively more difficult. I'm sure as you make progress through the game, the variety of behemoth grows exponentially larger. But, at least for the first several hours, the diversity of behemoth types was a little underwhelming. So, having played the game for a solid 4 hours, I believe that makes me fully capable of composing a clear, objective first impressions review of the game. Ahem. <clears throat> Dauntless is a beautiful game. It's a game that has you hunt down behemoths spread throughout the Shattered Isles to gather materials to craft better gear to hunt stronger behemoths to craft stronger gear to- Wait. I feel like I'm repeating myself here. But that is the game. You hunt to craft to hunt more to craft more. While I get that this isn't everyone's cup of tea, I do believe, as proven with the huge success of Monster Hunter World, that this style does in fact work. Unfortunately though, from what I can tell after playing it for several hours, the game doesn't really do anything new or innovative, which is actually to its merit. If something works, and works well, why do you need to change it, right? Overall, Dauntless plays like a less polished version of Monster Hunter for PC. It's highly entertaining and offers a fair amount of customization. The overall performance issues for players with low to mid-end PCs was quite poor, but otherwise I was pleased with how the game ended up turning out. Despite people hating on the game, or claiming it is the best action RPG to have ever graced the PC. It's a good game, with a lot of room to grow and improve. What are your thoughts on it?